Okay, last time we talked about, in a basic sense, what these shapes, these quartal shapes, what chords they might work over. Now let's just get a little more in depth with that. Let's take, first of all, just three notes from a configuration, which I introduced a little bit last time. There are examples of Herbie Hancock on a 251 playing this. That would be a 251 in B flat. So C minor, F7, B flat major. So notice we've talked about over major and minor chords. Both of those are, are subsets of the five note pentatonics we had. This is, this is over the C minor. Seven, seven, three, and over the B flat major, three, six, nine, which are important cores of these of these chordal voicings. And Herbie would use this over a two five one and move. Well, what this is is a thirteenth voicing over an F seven seven three thirteen. And notice he's just moving down the scale. So in C it would be this D minor G seven. Notice how easily, mm -hmm. and because Herbie tended to think holistically, in other words, he took into account what the bass player would play and what he was doing in his right hand. In fact, Herbie was known to play whole solos with no left hand. So he would just play a solo. Of course, he was, you have to be good at creating ideas, but just the bass and his lines. So he considered anything extra he added to be gravy. Basically, if it, if it could stand on its own with the bass line, then anything he added would be gravy. And he thought, so he thought holistically. So, anyway, going back to this, if we were to add one note, now this would be like a note we could add on the C minor pentatonic. Mm -hmm. So adding that, and with these same notes moving down like this, to the F7, this becomes 7, 3, 13, and that's the 9. So now it's just in the 2, 5 part, how nicely that moves. We could even add another note, another fourth up. Now there's your full C minor pentatonic. Just by adding again, we just have these three notes, these are common tones, these three notes moving. You see how these shapes can work very nicely. Sometimes, let's just take, let's take this. This is a C major pentatonic. All we have to do is move the E to E flat, and it becomes an F7. Just so, so these can be these shapes can can apply to dominant chords as well, and have diminished. Uh, sometimes just with one note changed. So here we get the necessary tritone in here in order to make it sound dominant just by doing that. Uh, so in fact, if we move this note, we get another tritone. That could be C down. So say you're on a blues. Mm. You can move from a one to a four chord really, really easily. Mm, keep See? all the same notes in your right hand there. Right. So these are some important things to move through. Now we talked, I think at the end of the last video, we talked a little bit about the so what chords, which is this. Yes. Right. And we talked about how actually, even though this could be thought of as a passing chord, like D minor, it just so happens all these notes are also chord tones in, in D minor. So you could actually hang on them without resolving them if you want to. Mm. But <clears throat> notice, this is just the same shape a step up. So it's like the E minor pentatonic and the D minor pentatonic <coughs> on E flat, when you go to the E flat minor chord in the bridge of so what, it's like an F minor pentatonic and an E flat 
minor penalty. Oh, see? So the, the first chord there is derived from the D minor pentatonic, but in order to get that one step up, you derive that from the E minor pentatonic, you correct? You can, but it's also... But yeah, the chord tones we, we, we could do, also work. That's right. That's why the first thing we did, remember, is we worked with the pentatonic shapes without thinking of what chords uh, they would work over, just to get the shape. So you start to see... The important thing is to understand the extensions, and that's you know that's a whole other topic. But you need to know what the set of accepted consonant notes is in order to decide what will work over what. So right. that's assumed in this video right. that that you know. And that, that. still and course, comes from tertian that, harmony. That comes from tertian harmony. Uh, so the tertian harmony rules still apply when talking right, the chord in general. So yeah. for example. Major seven, and every chord can go up to the thirteenth. Major seven, you have a nine sharp eleven thirteen. On a minor seven, you have a nine natural eleven thirteen. Mm -hmm. On a dominant, you tend to have a you have a sh sharp eleven. Now, of course, dominant is the one you can have altered notes, but we're not talking about that right now. The sharp eleven, I don't consider an altered note. I think of as an extension. So, and. Um, so as long as these things fit, uh, uh, so right now we're just talking about the chordal shape, so we'd be talking about the major and the minor. You want to make sure their chord tones, if you're going to actually use it not as a passing chord. But now let's talk about if we were using it as a passing chord. Say you were going from, you're not necessarily always just going to hit that pentatonic. You could move around. As a passing chord. Now, when I'm getting here, I'm actually using a different shape. Um, yeah, because you got a double note in there. I have don't a double you? note. That's right. So, so these, are, and it's the same thing. of say you were going to go, if you were an octave up, uh, like say on a B major, when we started with this, uh, the G flat pentatonic, you have that. You got that. But what if you want to do an octave up? See, voicings are range sensitive. Again, that's. That's a very broad topic beyond the scope of this video, but say, if I were to do it an octave up, I would do it in a, I wouldn't just do the configuration there, mm -hmm. because what's important in voicing is not just blend, blend's important, but also balance, especially as a pianist, when you're comping chords, you don't want suddenly the bottom to drop out. You want, you want to have a balance in weight between chords. So if I'm playing a major seven, a B major seven, with the fifth on top in this octave, and that's where it is, I'm going to basically double. The double. Fifth. That's right. So this, you could think of that as the core voicing, and then I'm, now these are referred to in jazz arranging as chorale style voicings, where you've actually, you double the top note of a drop. This, by the way, ha happens to be a drop two in this configuration. If you have it together, you have that, you drop it. So three, six, nine, five, we double that in octaves, but then you fill that in a little bit with this. So you get this nice, I wish I had a lower B on this keyboard, but 